Hey there, this is Alex Karpazis, Presentation Director at Ubisoft Montreal, and this is every operator in Rainbow Six Siege. There's 50 of them, so buckle up. Alibi, originally from Libya, now with GIS, the Italian CTU. Most operators in our game come from a CTU. That's a counter-terrorist unit. Most nations have their own specialized unit, whether it's FBI, SAT. It's about representing the elite of the elite for your nation when you're representing a CTU. Alibi's strengths are confusion. She wants to make sure that nobody can lock her down at any given time. She's here and then she's in another room. Using her decoys are super important to make sure that the attacking team doesn't have the right information. That way she can jump and surprise them whenever she needs to. And she can have up to three of them on a map. This creates a lot of intel because any attacker that shoots through it will actually get pinged and Alibi will know where you're at. Amaru from Peru, who's been introduced in Operation Ember Rise, and she is with the APCA. Amaru is unlike any operator we've had before. She has a grappling hook that lets her fly around a map. And this is the first time we're tackling an operator that deals strictly with movement. It's actually a new way to play the game. We thought about Amaru about a year ago. We called her our Attack on Titan operator, and the idea of grappling around a map was something we wanted to play with, but it took a lot of tech and research to make it work on every single map that we had. There are so many challenges designing Amaru. She's a person who can reach places extremely quickly, so we had to work on how quick is her cooldown on her gadget. And she's also somebody who latches onto every single ledge, window, so we had to do a complete pass on every single map to make sure that she didn't break anything. Ash, FBI from the US of A. Ash is the de facto leader of Rainbow Six, but we didn't actually plan it that way. It all came through her gameplay and how players were perceiving her. She was an incredibly strong operator. People always promoted her into roles of importance whenever they talked about her. So she kind of took on this mantle through the community. She was the first female operator that we designed in the game. And we wanted to try to fit a bazooka into the game. And that was extremely difficult. When we talk to Nicolas Drolet, our realization expert when it comes to gadgets, how do we get the effects of a bazooka into a game like Rainbow Six Siege? And that's where you get Ash's weapon. Bandit from Germany, GSG-9, one of our legacy operators. The GSG-9 is a very casual unit. All of them are wearing jeans. The idea was that they're all these undercover operators. So you see Bandit as this undercover biker gang member in his elite outfit, and that's kind of the story behind it. We wanted to have a car battery that would electrify steel walls, and it was kind of hard to fit in the idea of a car battery with an operator, so we just called it a day at making him undercover with this car battery electrifying walls. Blackbeard, Navy SEALs from America. Blackbeard is interesting because we learned so much from his ability. When he launched, he was one of the strongest overpowered operators we ever released. Besides the kick-ass beard of Blackbeard, what I love is the story behind the recruitment of the Navy SEALs, which obviously he's been through. One of the sessions that they have to go through is what's called a surf training, where a bunch of seals link arms in the ocean and have wave after wave crash into their face, and they have to do this for eight to 10 minutes. It's a really grueling test of physical strength and mental strength. Blitz, GSG-9 from Germany. A lot of people are terrified of Blitz. The original idea for Blitz though, and where he got his name from, was even more terrifying. While the defenders are reinforcing, Blitz actually spawns. So while you're <laughs> reinforcing walls, there's this crazy Blitz running around the map at the same time. Blitz's biggest strength is his speed and his ability to disarm the other opponent. So he uses his shield to flashbang them, instantly run up to their face and melee them. It's really, really effective. Buck, Canadian, from the GTF2. 
Buck is actually a bit of a homage to our home studio in Quebec. He's very Quebecois. When he grabs a hostage, he's like, away, let's go. And it's a bit like, in Fringlish, he would be saying, away, on y va. And it's only really funny to Parisian game devs who think the Quebecois accent is really cute. Capital Bope from Brazil. Capital is actually the first operator with a disability. He's missing an eye. And that wasn't to create a weakness, but to encourage showing the strength that he has. My favorite thing about him was how long it took to get the hair right. Capital is one of our oldest operators. And so when you have somebody in their mid 50s, how much gray hair do you put on that head. We had versions where he had too much gray hair. He looked like a guy who did not belong on the battlefield. And then when there wasn't enough, he looked like a totally young dude running around. So balancing the gray hair level was actually a big deal for us. Castle, FBI, US of A. Castle used to be a pro football player. So you actually see a bit of that in his silhouette. He has a large helmet, broad shoulders, and he stands out from the other FBI units. Castle's strength is being able to deny a lot of entry where usually you can't. These are windows, these are doors. You can reinforce a wall, but it's harder to reinforce a window. If you have a castle, you can put up those barricades and now the attacking team has to spend a lot more utility breaking into a site. Cavera Bope from Brazil. Cavera is one of our more threatening operators. She's the only operator that uses her ability that's not reliant on a gadget. And for it, we had to do some research. We watched documentaries about Bope interrogation sequences, which are absolutely brutal. They're so, so vicious. Bope interrogation techniques can vary from a knife to a throat, to waterboarding, to putting a bucket over your head and beating it. So what you see in the game is actually a toned down version of Bope interrogation. And she has, of course, that very unique face paint. Clash, MPS from England. Clash is our only defender with the shield. She's somebody who has a threatening presence and shows a lot of force behind that shield that she uses. The idea for Clash was we had so many operators on the attacking side with shields. Could we do the same thing with defenders? And it came with a lot of caveats. It meant that she can't have her shield and her weapon at the same time. So it was an interesting balancing exercise for our game design team. My favorite thing about her is how long it took to get that shield right. She has this giant foldable shield that is transparent. We wanted that transparency so that defenders could peek around, see what Clash is seeing, so that she could relay information and then you can do something about it. Whenever you're rendering something with transparency, you're rendering two layers. One, the actual transparent layer, and then everything that's behind it. And the transparent layer has to affect everything that's behind it. So it's actually really, really costly to do. And that makes it hard when you have a giant human-sized shield in front of an operator. Doc, G-I-G-N, from France. Doc is a medic, so a lot of his being is in that same vein. He has the famous elastic gloves. He has a white stripe on his helmet, which signifies when he's in the field. And he also has his electric paddles on him at all times. He's somebody who struggles with the idea of taking a life and he justifies it by saying, if he takes a life, it's in order to save others. Doc's strength is giving another player a second chance. He can, at range, res somebody if they're down but not out. And if you're low on health, ask your doc to heal you. It can actually change the tides of a battle. Dokubi from the 707th from South Korea. Dokubi is one of our greatest characters. She has so much characterization in her. She's the first operator to actually smile in her portrait. Her name actually comes from the Korean word for spirit. And it's a specific spirit that can either play a prank or do some good. So when designing Dokubi, this was the first time where we created an operator icon that wasn't tied to her gadget. It's the little Dokubi spirit and that's in everything that she uses. It's to represent her, it's on your phone when she hacks you. It represents who she is in kind of like a mischievous way. 
Echo SAT from Japan. When designing Echo, we kind of thought of the whole season. When we released Skyscraper, that was when we were thinking, okay, how do we dress up this unit? And it's really about civilian clothing underneath a lot of harnesses that meant they could reach the skyscraper map. So the SAT is the counter-terrorist unit for Japan. They were first revealed in the 90s and a little bit more info has been gathered in the early 2000s. When we reached out to Japanese officials, they didn't provide us any information because the SAT doesn't officially exist. It meant that we had to go through photography, items that we had to piece together. It was actually really difficult to know what this CTU was about. Ella from Grom, Poland. Ella was introduced in Operation Blood Orchid, which was a bit of a special season, Blood Orchid, and she's a sister of Zofia in the game. And the two sisters play off of each other very, very differently. Ella, after taking military academy, went to Berlin, became an artist, and that's where she's really de developed her rebellious streak. The Grom don't allow you to dye your hair. So of course, Ella dyes her hair green. She kind of wears her own uniform that she wants to wear. Finca from Spetsnaz, Russia. Finca came in Operation Chimera, and this was around the same time that we introduced the event Outbreak. The Outbreak event was a timed event where an alien capsule actually landed there, and Rainbow Six is called in to check it out. And that's where you see all of the operators come in and fight off this horde of zombies. She has a rare neuropathy disease where essentially she loses feeling in her extremities. Her ability, Adrenal Surge, is her actually combating that disease. Finca is really knowing about your team. Her adrenal surge actually means that recoil is lessened, which can actually throw off your teammates sometimes. So be communicative, make sure you tell them, hey, I'm gonna be using my ability soon, let's go. Frost GTF2 from Canada. So when we were designing Frost, we gave Frost and Buck kind of the stereotypical northerners, heavy jackets. She has her toucan, which is the Canadian way of saying winter hat, and kitted her out so that she could survive the elements. Frost is actually our first operator that has a purely mechanical gadget, something that can't be detected by IQ, and we put a lot of work into her doormat. Frost's doormat is something where she lays down this bear trap device to capture someone. Everybody looking at it thinks it's immediately obvious that there's something in front of them and they'll get trapped. In reality, when you're playing a game like Siege though, you don't always look for things like that. And it's one of those things where even in pro level plays, people will fall for it. Fuse Spetsnaz, originally from Uzbekistan. Fuse's backstory is actually pretty dark. It's based on the Moscow theater hostage situation back in 2002. And this is a theater that was full of 800 people that the Spetsnaz could not breach. So what they thought they would do is they would pump it full of gas that would incapacitate everyone inside of it. The unfortunate thing was the gas was only tested for external use and not interior use. So there was actually a lot of casualties involved. And that actually translates to Fuse where there can be teammate casualties. So it's pretty dark, but pretty true to the operator. My favorite thing about Fuse is no matter how confident the Fuse is, they'll usually kill the hostage. Glaz, Spetsnaz, Russian. The inspiration behind Glaz is actually the real Russian sniper Vasily Zaitsev, which you may have heard about from Enemy at the Gates. When we first designed him, he was a regular sniper and nothing fancy about his weapon. It was only until his backstory of being an artist and caring about details that we introduced this element where he would highlight the target through his scope you really don't have a lot of opportunities of having that long range firefight. So you really have to know what long corridors you have or what long line of sights you have to make them really effective. Goyo, FES from Mexico. 
Goyo is one of the more interesting operators we've developed recently. Originally, we wanted him to be an alternative to Smoke, which was to delay the attacking team. And we used the same mechanic as Smoke as well. He had something that was throwable. You would throw a canister, you would shoot it, and then it would litter the floor in fire. The problem with that is there's so much to think about and so much to do that usually Goyo would die in the process of doing all of that. So we changed it so that it was deployed shield where he would attach a canister behind it and then anybody on his team could trigger it and stall an attacking team. Gridlock SASR from Australia. When we released Gridlock in Operation Burnt Horizon, we had a ton of feedback from our Ubisoft Australia friends. They gave us names, they told us what they would say and what they wouldn't say and gave a lot of feedback on their look as well. Gridlock is this strong, powerful character who's at complete odds with her partner, who's Mozzie. One is the strong, silent type, the other the little, annoying, won't shut up type. During the season that we launched them, we tied a lot of Easter eggs behind our inspiration of Mad Max. One of those things was her middle name, which is Farius. Farius is not an Australian name, it's actually an anagram for Furiosa, which is an homage to Mad Max. Hibana, SAT, from Japan, Operation Red Crow. An interesting story about designing Hibana's gadget was that she has these pellets that she launches, and they have to be very technical, very quick, and deliver a payload that can open up an area. So we're actually struggling with what does that look like? How does it behave? Our art director was working on his motorcycle at the time, and he pulled off this piece that was kind of like a sprocket, and it became the Hibana pellet that we have in game. IQ GSG9, Germany. The idea behind IQ and her personality was actually taken from Jodie Foster in Silence of the Lambs. When we were thinking about the character, it was all about this intelligent individual that could analyze people and was very, very smart in how she approached people. Jackal, GEO from Spain. Jackal's special ability is to track footprints on a map. This is extremely powerful when you're dealing with a team that has a lot of roamers. They're leaving a lot of footprints on the exterior of their defending area, and it means that you can pinpoint them a little bit more easily and shut them down. Jaeger GSG9 from Germany. Jaeger is our only pilot of the group. He has a pilot helmet, which actually fits in really well with the GSG-9 kit. And it was him who was flying the helicopter during the outbreak event. It goes down and you have to go save him. Kaid from GIGR from Morocco. Kaid is our oldest operator in the game. So we wanted somebody who kind of exuded strength, but also had a bit of a gut. We just wanted him to be this father figure of Rainbow Six. No nonsense, very traditionalist. From design standpoint, he became this alternative to Bandit, where he could electrify a wall and deny a lot of entry. The whole idea behind Kaid, which actually means commander, is they're in charge of a fortress. Whenever they are the commander, they have their own special dagger, and they get their own new dagger each time a new commander is responsible for the fortress. Kapkan Spetsnaz from Russia. Not too many people know this, but his device is actually filled with nails. It's a bit harsh, but if you're running through a Capcan device, the thing that explodes is a box full of nails. Legion SDU from Hong Kong. Legion is actually the only operator with shorts on, but it was actually a design we took from a photograph of the CTU of somebody walking around in cargo shorts and a t-shirt holding a shield. So it's based off of the actual attire of the CTU unit. The toothpick that Legion has is actually in reference to his spiky goo mine. It's also a reference to Chao Young Fa in Hong Kong adventure films where he would always have a toothpick or a matchstick that he would have in his mouth. Lion, G-I-G-N from France. 
The story of Lion actually comes from a French producer in Paris. He grew up in a very strict household, attended military academy, and then dropped everything to become a video game producer. So that's a bit of what you see in Lion's backstory. Lion's special ability is his roar. The drone that flies in the sky, and when he triggers it, everybody has to freeze, otherwise their position is gonna get revealed. He's the only attacker where if a defender were to look out the window at the sky, they'd be like, oh yeah, there's a lion coming against us, we have to deal with this now. And the drone itself is actually like a four meter in diameter drone, so it's huge. Maestro, GIS from Italy. I joined the team at the very start of Operation Parabellum and we started on this new operator that has all this bravado. He's fearless, he always has a smile. I can confirm that we took a little bit of inspiration from a famous Italian plumber for his look. Maverick, Delta Force, American. In Operation Grim Sky, we actually had two operators from two separate CTUs. This was where we wanted to focus more on backstories that were really meaningful for them. For Maverick, he had gone to Afghanistan, fell in love with the culture, and then disappeared. While Maverick was in Afghanistan, he played Buskashi. This is a brutal, brutal sport where it's a bit like polo, but instead of a ball, it's a dead goat that you play with. Our narrative director was researching about Afghanistan, its culture, and actually found a French journalist who, much like Maverick, went there, fell in love with the culture, and actually discovered this sport that he fell in love with, and that kind of raised a flag, like, this is amazing, this should be somebody's backstory. Mira, GEO from Spain. Mira is probably one of our most game-changing operators uh, when we released her in Velvet Shell. Her one-way mirror meant that you could gain a lot of information outside of a defended room, and it kind of changed every single defense point in the game for the attackers to kind of adjust to this ability. Her gadget design is actually based on military vehicles. So if a windshield of a military vehicle would break and obstruct any kind of vision, there's a hydraulic that can eject the window so that you can continue driving and seeing where you're going. So this actually was the thinking behind Mira's gadget. She's our resident R&D specialist, so almost every gadget goes through her. And so if we need to make maybe a balancing change to a gadget, we attribute it to Mira making these augmentations for these operators. Montaigne, G-I-G-N from France. The idea behind Montaigne was the 1994 Marinan assault, where on a commercial plane, there was a hostage situation. The GIGN went in there using airplane ladder to breach the airplane and rescue the hostage. At the front of that column going up the steps, there was a GIGN officer and he took grenade blasts, he took shotgun shells, and he took bullets straight to the chest and he would not stop. And that kind of embraces the look and feel of Montaigne. Montaigne's ability is a big ass shield. When you're talking about a full length shield like Montaigne's ability when it's activated, you're the front layer that separates the defenders from the attackers and you're trying to relay as much information as possible. Mazi SASR from Australia, mate. Mazi brought a lot of energy to Burnt Horizon. He's the short, energetic, won't shut up operator that kind of keeps on yapping. <laughs> it's like really, really, really was quiet. Quiet. Mazi is actually based off of Robert Carlyle from Train Spotting. He's constantly being bigger than who he is, mouthing off, and a lot of that's reflected in Mazi. Mute from the SAS Great Britain. When the team was thinking about Rainbow Six Siege, they're all fans of MOBAs, but we didn't know how that translated to 
the operators in our game? Were they heroes or were they more like a class? And so when you see Mute and the SAS, you can see they all have those gas masks on. The only thing that differentiates Mute is two pieces of tape on his helmet which is crazy because he's one of the most recognizable operators in our game. Mute is my favorite just because of the mystery that surrounds him. He hasn't had a face reveal yet, so it'd be really cool to see what that looks to be. Nook, Jaeger Corpse from Denmark. Nook has a very striking design. She has this veil that covers her face and it looks stunning, but when we tried it in the game, we ran into some problems. Mostly when you're repelling as Nook and you go upside down, that would mean that her veil would drop and reveal her face, which we cannot have. So we went back and actually attached her veil to hooks on her armor. Only the operators in Rainbow Six know who she is, where she comes from. So you can see why it's really important she's hiding that identity. Nomad, GIGR from Morocco. First of all, this was an operator where we didn't want to focus on weapons. When we're talking about her, we're talking about an explorer who's gone to the highest heights and really looked at everything that she could travel around to visit, write about in her journal. Her losing digits on her hand was to tell that she pushed past obstacles like that. So in all of her weapons that she's holding, in all of the props that she's holding, we have to account for that when we're animating her. Pulse. FBI American. Pulse is one of our original operators, and he was the only operator that didn't have any kind of headgear. His look was based off of Bruce Willis in Die Hard. Pulse's strength is gaining a lot of intel on the attacking team, knowing where they're coming from, and his kit helps him do all of this. It's amazing to see Pulse use his gadget, which is the heartbeat sensor. He can see through the walls where the person's heartbeat is, and he can use C4 to basically see them approaching on a level above, throw the C4, and explode it, and it's amazing whenever it pops off in a pro league game. Rook, G-I-G-N, French. Rook is my favorite defender because he is the most user-friendly operator in a very complex game like Rainbow Six Siege. You have his ability, which is essentially dropping a duffel bag full of armor for your teammates. So the first thing you do when you spawn is you drop that duffel bag and your job's done. Sledge, S-A-S, from the UK. The original idea of Sledge comes from a real life operation. It was called Operation Nimrod. It was the assault on the Iranian embassy in London. The first person to breach the embassy was a guy with a huge ass hammer and that became Sledge. There's a lot of video game magic that goes into the timing of the swing of Sledge, how much room he needs. We wanted it to feel impactful. We also wanted you to see everything, so it took a bit of tweaking with the animation, and it's rather quick. Sledge is pretty strong, but I'm pretty sure in real life, he would not be that strong to be able to blow open a huge hole in a reinforced wall. Smoke, SAS from the UK. Smoke is really special because he was the very first operator designed for Rainbow Six. When we were talking about smoke, it came back to the idea of, well, do we treat the entire CTU as a unit? Everybody gets a gas mask with the SAS. And we were thinking, okay, everybody has a gas mask, so they all share this kind of visual. Do they share something that's gameplay related too? And so we were initially questioning whether or not all of the SAS would be able to withstand smoke's ability or can see through smoke. We move more towards operators being heroes than to something more like unit based. This is where we made a lot of design decisions with Smoke. You don't really have an idea of where his allegiance is and actually Smoke is a bit specific in this respect and in this case it actually helps that his face is hidden. Tachanka, Spetsnaz, Russian. When we designed Tachanka, we didn't know everything there was to know about Rainbow Six. We still don't know everything there is to know about Rainbow Six and how to play it, 
but it's a bit unfortunate that Rainbow Six always encourages movement, never staying in one place at any given time. What that means for Tachanka is he has a gadget where he's fixed in one place at any given time. It started out as a giant mounted gun. Then we realized it was too weak and we put a giant shield on it so that he was a little bit more protected when he's standing still for the other team. And he's still a little bit more weak for him. So we'll touch on Tachanka maybe in another season. Thatcher, SAS, British. Thatcher is absolutely named after Margaret Thatcher. This ties into Sledge where he was part of Operation Nimrod, the assault on the Iranian embassy in London. If you search Margaret Thatcher Operation Nimrod, you'll find a photo of Margaret Thatcher standing with three SAS guys. The guy in the middle is Thatcher. That's why he's named after her. On his elite skin, he actually has a medal from Margaret Thatcher for the operation. Thermite FBI from America. Thermite is absolutely one of my favorite operators to play. He's so essential in a lot of the gameplay to open up those areas of opportunity to breach through and break open the shell of a defending team. It was actually the first time too where we had to think about realizing the operator in a first person view. So he has these injured, burnt hands that are bandaged. So we wanted to make sure that was an important element when you're playing him that you could see that. We had to work really hard on realizing the gadget because nothing really exists like Thermite's breaching charge. We had to design it so that two explosions happened. One that separated the reinforcement. The second explosion was when it pushed it in. This was an example of working on the realization, working on the animation where he places the charge he has to be very, very careful setting it up and then running for the hills and triggering it. Twitch, GIGN from France. When we were designing operators, we looked at the CTUs to inspire. Unfortunately, with the GIGN, there had never been in the history of GIGN a female operative. And this was actually an important moment for Rainbow Six where we decided that it was more important to value representation and diversity versus basing it off of real life. Twitch is essentially the first female GIGN operator. Valkyrie, Navy SEALs, American. At the time we were developing Valkyrie, it was 2016, and that was actually the time when the Navy SEALs opened up recruitment to more than just males. It was actually this really cool opportunity to have this super strong, powerful female operator for representing the Navy SEALs. The visual look of Valkyrie was heavily inspired by Knessa Johnson, a real army vet that has these badass like sleeve tattoos and really influenced the look of Valkyrie at the time. Velk's special ability is her Velk cams. This is a throwable camera that you can throw onto a wall, under a chair, anywhere really, and it acts as intel for your team. We severely overestimated how much we can control players and their creativity when it came to this camera. Before we patched it out, the throw that Velk had was incredible. She was like a quarterback. If she broke open a window and threw it, it could fly across the map and nobody would realize where the camera was, where they were being spotted from. So we had to adjust how strong Valkyrie was when she was throwing those cameras. Vigil 707th from South Korea. Favorite thing about Vigil has to be the mask. It's so iconic. It's a bit inspired by the 707th. It was meant to be a bit vague so that people could take away what they wanted to. It had to instill fear, but it also had to be a simple enough mask that is it a hockey mask? Is it like a threatening mask? It's something that anybody could look at and kind of impart their own feelings on. Warden, US Secret Service from America. This was a character that we wanted to design for a long, long time. Our art director wanted to have an operator in a suit for over two years. And Warden finally presented himself as this perfect embodiment of the slick agent in a suit. 
Warden's ability is his smart glasses. He does a flashy little flip of his smartwatch and it triggers his glasses. When they're triggered, he can see through smoke, which is really handy when it comes to anybody who's throwing a smoke and trying to plant on a site. Ying SDU from Hong Kong. Her special ability is throwing a very unique flashbang. You can set it on a timer or you can set it so that it can go off immediately. Most players throw as many as they can into a room and then jump in, but usually one of her gadgets will do the job. Zofia Grom from Poland. Sophia has an interesting relationship with Ella, her sister, in that they don't always get along. Sophia loves her sister, but Ella wants nothing to do with her. And so you have that kind of antagonistic relationship and it actually bleeds over into the game as well. If you kill Sophia with Ella, you'll get bonus points in the game. Zofia is from a more traditional military background. She's the first mother in Rainbow Six, and this came from one of our developers was pregnant, and the writer was like, this is a super interesting element to explore. Let's bring it in for the backstory of Zofia. Sophia has a very unique ability that if she gets down but not out, she will revive herself with one sliver of health. It rarely, rarely happens, but when it does, it's epic. That's it for me, everyone. That's all 50 operators in Rainbow Six Siege. I hope you learned something from it. See you next time.